Did you know that for this movie, Maximus's description of his home, specifically how the kitchen is arranged and smells in the morning and at night, was ad-libbed. It's a description of Russell Crowe's own home in Australia. So Gladiator, in my opinion, is one of Ridley Scott's best work. He's got a lot of great movies that he's made, but I consider Gladiator to be a top three Ridley Scott movie. And I also consider Gladiator in the top 20 best movies of all time. But that's just my opinion. Even 24 years later, this movie is still iconic in so many different ways. And I have three things I loved about this movie, and my last reason is definitely my favorite. So the first thing I loved about this movie is there's a lot of great storytelling going on, some great characters, and just a really engaging, driving plot. So I start with the story. Ridley Scott's very, very good at historical pieces. He's very good at just fleshing out every detail that needs to be fleshed out. But then the story of, you know, a general. Like, he's, he's one of the best generals out there and his own country turns on and betrays him for power for politics and it's the classic revenge story now there's been I don't know how many revenge stories out there that have been made so there's nothing super special about this plot about this story of revenge but it's just the way that Ridley Scott goes about building up the suspense building up the story building up the characters is what makes this movie so good because Maximus's character is very cool and calm throughout most of the movie like he's not like some revenge stories where the the main character will go all out will be known of like this person's on the warpath like they're they're hunting people who have wronged them Maximus's approach is very strategic very military like and I love that he's buying his time just like in war just like it's the strategies of war he's buying his time for the right moment to strike and then when the moment came Team, he went straight for the throat. Just super super great job at just building up a very intriguing story. You know, just the, the amazing characters in this movie that just like team up like they're just ragtag rebels basically and they go against their government of the time. And you know, that's I think what's one thing that people really love about this movie is the rebellion, the, the rebellious nature of this movie. Second thing I loved about this movie were the performances. Obviously the top two best performances in this movie were Russell Crowe and Joaquin Phoenix. Russell Crowe, I think during this time, like during the 2000s was like peak Russell Crowe. It seems he's kind of fallen off with his acting. Nowadays, it's kind of he's just taking roles here and there, nothing super profound. Don't be mistaken, like he's got acting chops. He's an Academy Award winner for a reason. Next to A Beautiful Mind, I think this is one of his best roles. He's just a very commanding performance. Like, you're, you feel for this man. You feel it in your soul. You feel the agony that he went through. He's serving his country, and what does his country do to him? And then you're just on the journey with him, and you're cheering him on, you're supporting him, like you want him to take out communists. You want him to basically dismantle the Roman government, you know, a gladiator, a slave, because it's what's right, it's, it's what, he stands for something, he stands for morals, he stands for freedom, you know? And he put his heart and soul into, th into this role, and you can clearly see it throughout the entire movie. I do want to talk about Commodus as well. Joaquin Phoenix, do connect, like we already know. His character has always been very, very interesting to me. He's got such complexity to him. At one side of him, he's a super, super creepy guy. He's very just disgusting, like moralistically and all this other stuff. But on the other side, he's He's insecure, yet he has enough courage to go out and face Maximus in the middle of the gladiator pit. I mean, he, he's very hard to predict at times. You don't know what he'll do for approval. You don't know what he'll do for himself. The biggest thing about Commons that I've always just been disturbed by, but at the same time, Joaquin just does it so, so well, is his creepy, creepy vibe of his love towards his sister, not like, you know, brother-sisterly love, like he goes like sweet home Alabama love. I know the Greeks and the Romans, they were very like open with their sexuality. They were very, pretty much anything goes. I'm sure there was, in, like there was incest back then, like, you know, but his character is just disgusting. Like you can see him get too close to his sister. Like he, he has all these weird antics he does, all these weird things he does around his sister. And then he admits it in the movie near the end where he's finally like snapped that he wants to have a kid with his own sister and she's gonna have nothing to say about it she, he's basically saying i'm going to rape you you're gonna be happy about it you're gonna have this kid and he's gonna be the next emperor when i pass away like he is completely unhinged at that point and that's when joaquin phoenix shines as the unhinged characters he's just really good at it for some reason there are a few lines he ad-libbed in those scenes too that just really 
just brings you in, just really intensifies the situation even more. And the thing that sucks about this is he should have won an Academy Award. Like, I know a lot of people agree with me on this. Should have won an Academy Award, but he was snubbed. I don't remember who won the Academy Award over him, but it was a big, big Academy Award snub that he should have won. He, he has it in my book. And then, of course, my favorite scene, easily hands down, is the scene where he finally faces communists in the middle of a gladiator ring. It says his famous speech. There are so many great movie speeches out there. And this one is like at the top for some reason. It's a super short speech too. There's not much to this speech, but the way he goes about it, like it's the buildup, right? It's the buildup, a climax is there. And then you finally speak. He finally says everything he's been wanting to say to communists. And he goes all in on it. Straight for the throat, man. Straight for the throat speech. It was just a remarkable scene. I mean, the music, Hans Zimmer coming in with the music. I mean, all of it, it's all just perfection. Perfection, perfect execution of this scene. So I highly recommend check out Gladiator again very, very soon. Because we got Gladiator 2 coming to theaters in November. I'm actually kind of interested to see what that's going to be all about. So for Gladiator, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 mud flaps. And remember, leave me a thumbs up and drop in the comments below. What is your favorite movie about the Greek or the Roman time period? See you next time.